Lauren is quite an interesting character in Critical Role Campaign 3. She seems to be a fan favorite, and I can see why. She's one of my favorites as well. I think she's a great dynamic with Imogen, and really with the rest of the party in general, and I love the way that her appearance is kind of a dichotomy with her uh, demeanor, and how they kind of contrast one another, and that's something I always like in D&D characters. Furthermore, I think she's interesting from a mechanical standpoint, and that's what I'm going to get into today. She's unique in terms of critical role characters, as we've never had a character start a campaign as a multiclass before. Campaign 3 started out at a higher level than the prior campaign, Campaign 2. Uh, in Campaign 1, they were kind of inexperienced with 5th uh, edition, and they didn't really dip into multiclassing until later in the campaign. So the creative potential of Vladimir's build was very immediately apparent from that. But I think the Warlock Sorcerer multiclass, particularly in this case at their current level, is quite interesting. And I'm going to delve into exactly why in today's video. I'm Quinn the GM, thank you for joining me, and if you enjoy this, be sure to subscribe and uh, look out for more. I'm going to probably do more stuff like this in the future, as people seem to enjoy when I talk about things on Critical Role, as I've done a couple of videos covering it in the past. So yeah, let's uh, dive into why exactly Laudanus Mechanical Build is so interesting. Real quick, before we get into the video proper, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this. I know a lot of my viewers aren't subscribed, and I'd really appreciate it if you did. I'd love to make content about D&D generally and about Critical Role. So yeah, quick interruption, let's get back to the video. Just a heads up, this warning will contain spoilers through Critical Role Campaign 3, Episode 23. It's the last one I've seen. Uh, so, multiclassing has been a thing in Critical Role for a long time. Characters are done in the first campaign, second campaign, but never as early as Laudna has. She is a multiclass of a sorcerer and a warlock. She is initially a warlock who multiclassed into sorcerer, which makes sense for story reasons. Particularly because she was able to be brought back through the warlock power of Delilah Briarwood and then tap into her own natural, kind of undead potential with her sorcerer later. She does seem to be leaning more on the sorcerer side of that, particularly having two levels in Warlock and one, or sorry, she started out with two levels in Warlock and one level in Sorcerer. She currently has four levels in Sorcerer, two levels in Warlock, as the party is currently level six. Personally, for me, uh, if I were making this build, I would advise starting off with Sorcerer, as the saving throw resistances are marginally better. Particularly, Warlocks get Wisdom and Charisma. Wis both wisdom is quite useful. Charisma is less useful. Whereas Sorcerers get Charisma, which is also less useful, and Constitution, which is incredibly important for concentration checks, which they tend to have a lot of. Uh, overall, though, I think it's a very good combination as both these classes scale off of Charisma, and both of these subclasses being very Undead-centric, being the Shadow Sorcerer and the new Undead Warlock from Van Orkton's Guide to Ravenloft. They intermesh quite well, and some of the abilities work together in really interesting and unique ways. Furthermore, the spellcasting capabilities of a warlock make this build even more interesting, and that is something that really made me want to make this video, and particularly is on display in the combat in Campaign 2, Episode 23. The thing that inspired me to make this is my realization that Laudna has a lot of first-level reaction spells, like more than I thought. In that combat, she used, I think in this order, uh, Silvery Barbs, and then Shield, and then Featherfall, all of which are first-level reaction spells that can be used in a defensive capacity. I think it's a really cool way to build it in that warlocks and sorcerers even tend to be more dependent on their cantrips for damage, especially considering that she has Eldritch Blast, which is the best damage and cantrip for the game. Being able to use that, she's able to save her first level spell slots in order to use them in utility and defensive ways, particularly to save herself and her party members, as we saw with these spells. Silvery Barbs is an incredibly powerful spell that I already have a video on on this channel when it first came out. Um, it allows you to force an enemy to re-roll a successful attack, which she used to successfully block an attack on Ashton. She used a shield to block a spine attack on herself from these flying stingray type things. I forget the exact name of it. I apologize. Uh, and then she used Featherfall to prevent Orm from immediately falling to his death and splatting on the ground 300 feet below, as she did spoilers at one point in a previous campaign, which I won't get into in case you didn't see that. Um... Furthermore, I think it's interesting that my first thought with this was that, oh, that's cool, but she's going to run out of spell slots. First level spell slots are, the characters tend to only have four, and they generally run out pretty quickly, and these spells don't upcast for any value whatsoever. They just uh, essentially consume a higher level slot for a lower level function. But then I looked on Crit Roll Stats, which, big thanks to Crit Roll Stats for having all of the information on this. It's quite interesting because she has six first level spell slots, and I've forgotten about that. She has four from her Sorcerer class and two Pact slots from her Warlock class. It's really uh, synergistic, this, because it really allows her to make the most of these reaction spells. The real uh, thing there being that she doesn't have to waste higher level spell slots, which she still has through being a Sorcerer, in order to gain the functions of these reaction spells. I think it's a great idea, and I wish that I'd come up with that idea for a build myself. 
I also think it's great to consider the sorcery points as well as they provide further uh, ability to give spell slots as they're able to, I believe, use two sorcery points to make a first level spell. So theoretically, if she used all of her four sorcery points so far, she could have eight first level spells per long rest. And the pact slots, furthermore, I'm saying furthermore a lot, I need to refrain from that, I apologize. Uh, the pact slots can come back on a short rest, which is also quite nice as the main uh, weaknesses of this build come into effect on kind of longer hauls, which I'm going to get into here now. This build seems to have two main weaknesses to me. The first I already mentioned, long haul dungeon crawl type deals where the first level spell slots might be expended fairly quickly in a single fight. This is less of a concern because of the Warlock multiclass, because those come back on short rests. And furthermore, sorcery points are able to fill in the gaps for spell slots that they already uh, may not have had otherwise. Furthermore, the only other downside that I see is a limit of only having a single reaction. Uh, Mercia might be used to having multiple reactions from Bow last campaign, as the Cobalt Soul monk allows that. But only having one reaction per round is quite a limiting factor in uh, the toolbox of all of these defensive spells. She can only stop one person from falling uh, or shield herself in one given round. However, this does really help the action economy, the fact that these are reactions. She's able to cast these in addition to casting a spell on her turn if she wants to. Particularly the ability to either quicken cantrips or cast a hex as a bonus action and still cast these reaction spells is a great boon for her and generally for her party as well as it's able to keep her up and in the fight as well and save them from damage as we saw in this fight in campaign 3 episode 23. I really enjoyed that fight for a lot of reasons. I thought it showed a lot of people's good potential and had a lot of creative solutions on the part of the party. And I think it's interesting. I had the thought recently that Campaign 3 took a little while for me to get into, and it was very similar to Campaign 1 in that way. I think it just felt a little different because I was watching it in real time this time. But it took me about 20 episodes in both cases to really feel like the campaign got into its groove and made me feel like I was really enjoying it. And I think these last few sessions, including this fight in Session 23, really led me to feeling like I'm really enjoying the campaign. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. So where do I think this build should go from here? Personally, if this were me building it, which it is not, and I respect any choice that Mercer should make as she's a professional D&D player, I am not, uh, my thought would be to lean more into the sorcerer side, get more spell slots, get more high level spells, as those are quite needed, especially considering that she's now one level of, away from third level spells, which could either give her a ton of really useful just spells to do damage or utility, or it could give her another really powerful reaction spell in Counterspell, which we haven't really seen in action much this campaign because the party's not fought very many spellcasters, and I think the only arcane caster is Imogen. And I don't know if she took Counterspell or not. I would hope so, as I generally hope that somebody in the party has it at any given time. Uh, Scanlan has proven that as quite important. Uh, but overall, I think that that is the main uh, way that I would go for that build, especially going for more ability score increases. Bumping that charisma up is quite important for increasing her damage output and her overall spell DC and whatnot. And I really think that her build has a lot of creative potential going forward as well. I love that it's, it's a multi-class going forward because I think that also sends a good message to all the players watching it in that multi-classing is always something that is viewed as quite intimidating, at least the players that I've played with, or many players that I've played with, not all of them. Uh, I haven't ever multi-classed myself, um, though that's not for lack of wanting to. I just tend to not be a player. Uh, but overall, I think that the fact that she came in as a multi-class and shows that it can work together in a very synergistic way is a great way to get more players to take that path less traveled. Uh, so overall, that was my main thoughts on Londa's build. I just wanted to make this video after that fight because I thought it worked together really well and I thought it was a really cool concept that I really wanted to expand on a bit. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and like it. Uh, I really appreciate anybody doing that. And uh, yeah, I thank you for your time and I hope to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you.